ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, on boys and girls as well, welcome to another fun-filled, spectacular episode of Pixels, Plastic, and Ink. Ink. And we are your hosts, Mr. Chet Maddox, Alexander Storm, Dr. Brantley, and Rod himself here. And we are going to get into the things tonight as we talk about an important topic, and that is all the Marvel movies and TV series, the lineup Oh boy, all the trailers are dropping, all the hype, is it real, is it not? We're going to talk about a variety of different things, starting with, we got Agatha, we got Cap America, we've got Daredevil Born Again, hell, we've got Craven that just dropped coming out in December, we've got Fantastic Four, Thunderbolts, I mean, Marvel is on a run. Is it going to be a good run? We shall see. Deadpool was great. But will the next one be as great? We're going to talk about that and more. And then, well, there's variants popping up all over the place. Robert Downey Jr., a variant of Dr. Doom? Or what is he specifically? We saw a bunch of variants in Deadpool. We're going to do the fan variants. Yes, the crew of Pixels, Plastic, and Ink have come up with their own Marvel Universe variants stay tuned this is pixels plastic and ink Tons of Marvel activity. Gentlemen, how are you on this fine evening? Once again, dipping into the world of the MCU. Chad, how are you feeling? I'm good, sir. I'm good. Thanks for asking. Uh, I am uh, trying to decide where my brain lands with all of the trailers coming out. And I have uh, a lot of questions around release times and why. Um, but there are, you know, there are quite a few things coming out. So I think we'll have some some, some good and some bad and some uh, why does that exist. I have a feeling on at least one, at least one of these I'm <laughs> kind of on the uh, why is this going to happen and then happen so soon. But no, I, I uh, I'm good. What about you, Doctor Brantley? How are you doing? All right. Um, yeah, looking forward to this, and uh, we'll see. Yeah, there's a couple things that don't look so hot, but you know. And Mr. Storm. Well, I know that tonight we're talking about variants, but let's do another variant. I don't see the chat. Wait a minute, we're being recorded tonight. So if you're watching this tonight, we're recorded. So. There's no need to chat, but there is a point to leave comments in it and everything. We always love everybody to subscribe. And tonight's the episode most definitely because the thing I'm looking forward to talking about the most is that Daredevil uh, Born Again trailer. That was awesome. And I'm glad they're bringing the Netflix shows into the MCU because that's where it always should have been. Mm -hmm. Right on. Well, we could be variants as well. So you could be watching pre record ppi variant episode and the real mr storm could be on the next one you you just never, never know. know never know you never know but let's jump right into it and, and again subscribe everybody because at the at the end of this episode we are going to talk about our own variants who did we choose to be a variant in the mcu more to come 
But let's start off with first and foremost. Let's talk about the thing that's most relevant, the one that dropped pretty recently. Um, we got two. We got uh, we got a bunch of stuff that happened in D23, but Craven is the last one that just dropped the trailer uh, where we did see Rhino. Uh, some controversy on the CGI, or you know, a lot of people may be excited we don't see a robot Rhino, or is this the Rhino from the Spider Universe, or a different... I got to get your thoughts, gentlemen. Uh, Red Band trailer, lots of lots of blood, lots of punching. We saw Russell Crowe. Any hope for Craven this December? What were your trailer reactions? Uh, this is first, desperation. My first <laughs> reaction uh, was alluded to earlier where I said, why is it coming out so soon? But I don't know. If it's half as good as Morbius, then I think we got a winner on our hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why is it coming Netflix? out so soon? It's been sitting on the shelf for like two yeah. years. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I feel like that spot was taken up by it, and it could have just sat there longer. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't well. think this is. I don't think this is something anyone asked for. So I don't understand. I don't like. No one even asked for the comics that this this character was in. So like, I don't get where they're coming up with this idea that people want to see Craven. Well, because you can only do so many spiders in the Sony universe and, you know, you're running out of characters. But that's, but that's the problem is, like, take it away. Like, get rid of, uh, I don't know. It's like, so, Sony needs to not. We, we were talking about this stuff, like, off camera, but, like, Sony needs to knock it off, man. They're just, they, 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 they murdered the Fantastic Four franchise. They couldn't figure out Spider-Man. No, that was Fox. Uh, Fox, yeah, Fox murdered. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I just, another, I, another I, murderer. I, yeah, I just equated <laughs> it. Tony. But, you know, that's the studio that keep that murdered the X Men. Don't yeah, forget. Exactly. <laughs> Several times, <laughs> anyway, yeah, not just once. Regardless, I just don't see who asked for this this to come out. So. Yeah, no, I, I think it's the Sony executives that are they're trying to force something, and it's you know, look, we Morbius. Even though they had Jared Leto, who's a very good actor, uh, that whole script wasn't to par, and it was evident within five minutes. Madam Webb, you know, before we even saw the film, everyone was clamoring how dumb this idea was. And if you have the chance, if you, if you subscribe to Netflix and uh, you have nothing to do this weekend, and uh, don't watch Madam Web. <laughs> you know, there's a hundred stuff there that you well, can hey, watch. You don't need to waste your weekend. We if you don't another, feel like drinking and you want to kill some brain cells, oh, watch yeah. Madam Web. I mean, you all are just looking to lose subscribers left and right with that recommendation. <laughs> Stay away from Madam Web as far away that you can. I guess the question is, we you know, uh, we we did say that, you know, for our box office graveyard yep. award, mm -hmm. Madam Webb, our prediction, yep. which he would take home the title, which is looking very likely. But do you think Craven has a potential chance of taking the taking the trophy? I don't know, man. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think anything could be worse than Madam Webb. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I kind of agree yeah. with that. I don't. But we'll be, see. You know, could be wrong. Sony can always do worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Speaking of Sony, we have another uh, film, and that is the, the the third installment of Venom with a Venom horse oh, uh, featured. Uh, so let's talk about the Sony Spider-Verse, Tom Hardy uh, playing Venom. Now, the rumor is that we will see at the uh, tail end of this a maybe a spider, maybe uh, a Tom Holland, which would then segue Venom into the official uh, MCU, either way, uh, we get the final version of Sony's Venom. Your thoughts on that trailer and the Venom franchise? Well, you know, I've never been a fan of any of the Venom films. I know it's extremely popular. <laughs> I just, I think they're kind of like, you know, just not really that good. And I'm not a big fan of, uh, of most of the actors that's in it and everything, you know, uh, every time I, I think I hear Hardy's voice, I remember his Bane, and it just, it's like when I didn't oh, even know. Oh, yeah. I'm a Venom horse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Brentley reminded me of, um, I thought they had a separate actor that did Venom's voice. Apparently that's Tom Holland 
doing Tom Venom Hardy. Slow too, or Tom Slater, Tom Hardy doing Venom's voice as well. And I'm like, what? So it, it's, you know, because I found it always a little annoying, but I thought there was a separate actor. Um, you know, the I, I think they ran out of stuff when you see the, the Venom horse and everything else like that. I just think they're just, they're running out of ideas. And, and it's unfortunate because in the comic, he's a better character than what we're seeing him perceived on the screen. And he's a little bit more like Venom should be close to a, almost like a like a horror film almost because he's extremely scary in the books, and he just seems a little comical and whimsical in the the whole um, Spider Man Sony verse that they're doing. So, you know, I don't I don't have any high hopes for it. I don't think I'm rushing to the theaters for Venom three. Uh, I don't know, Doctor Brentley, did you buy your tickets? Oh yeah. Um... <laughs> No, look, uh, Sam Raimi's version of Venom, I thought yeah. was terrible mm -hmm. until I saw mm -hmm. these versions of Venom. And now that's looking like Shakespeare uh, yeah. because that actually had like some cool visuals um, besides, you know, they cast the wrong person to be the character. But uh, visually, I think it was good in the Spider-Man 3. But these ones are so bad and... Tom Hardy, you know, is trying to screw up two different accents. Uh, you know, one as a New Yorker and uh, the other as, I don't know, wherever the hell uh, Venom came from, uh, you know, like some weird backwater place in space. But uh, that accent's not any better. Backwater but, space? That's right. Mm -hmm. In space, backwater, huh? The best, the best Venom resides in the video games. Yes. Right? Like, mm -hmm. if Sony has done it right, it's with the video game franchise. I don't know why they don't turn to the producers of the video game and, like, design Venom and the storylines associated with the PS4 and PS5 Spider-Man versus the movies that they have created, including this one. So, uh I hope Venom does transition to the MCU because I think they could possibly do a better mm -hmm. job, and we deserve to see, you know, Tom Holland versus I don't know if it's Tom if it will be Tom Hardy or a somewhat uh, another variant of Venom, um, but I want to see that on the big screen done well with a massive budget, good storyline, and I'm hoping we get that. But other than seeing the Venom horse, I think that's kind of cool. It's a goofy gimmick thing, but that's kind of come on, you can't. That's other than that. I don't think the, the the movie will be great. Well, yeah, I think Chet like, already pre-ordered that, didn't you? The Venom yeah, Horse. I yeah, <laughs> I like, yeah, like, uh, they had a, they had a deluxe version, and I, I bought three of them. Um, yeah, I think that I think the Venom Horse is just trying to pay homage to like all the Venom Venomized characters mm -hmm. throughout like throughout history. So I get it, but also like you can't. I want to say you can, but they did. But like you can't honestly be sitting there <laughs> and, and and going like, man, people are gonna love this venomized horse. Like it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. But then I, you know, you go back and uh, Spider Man three from San Remi, like he was like dancing and you know they're just yeah. you know Craven's coming out, so they'll do whatever they want, I guess. Yeah. Well, we led with the two films that are a bit iffy. And I think I'll finalize the potential if you can get more into maybe. But what do you all think about Agatha, which is the next Marvel um, franchise that's hitting streaming September? Um, your thoughts, obviously the character that was introduced in uh, WandaVision and now has her own uh spinoff tv series yeah i mean it's convenient that it's coming out the same time as like wicked is hitting the theaters <laughs> um and then there's like uh the green the green witch in it mm -hmm. uh look eh, you know just eh. like i think uh i think you know no well, yeah i mean wandavision was <coughs> vision was cool it was like unique but it also was very repetitive it got boring and uh and then just didn't care after episode two um so like they took you know they destroyed wanda vision in like one and a half episodes and uh i don't i don't know i, I i'm trying not to be too too rude about it but like uh, i mean it's kind of like 
if I could spend time watching this or go watch the theatrical version of Wicked, I'm going to go watch Wicked um, because I feel like they're going to try to push this as a bigger series than what it needs to be down my throat. And I'm not. And it's like, okay, I get it. Like, we're, we need your. I, first of all, this again is in the same the same realm for me as, as Craven, which is like, who asked for this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the only re- the only way you're getting me to watch Wicked is you tie me down in the chair and force me. To <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Dude, I don't that know. does not watch. look good at all. If, <laughs> if, yeah, but if you if you haven't seen the play, like uh, I, I've seen it. Yeah, uh, I, I I'm I'm gonna agree with a couple of things. Like Chet said, I know uh, Doctor Merton and I was talking about this a couple of days ago. Is that this was just a, a pull of a character that you know no one understood why did they make this as its own series i don't think it really needed i think it was entertaining in wandaverse but i don't want to see a whole series on the character and you know it's like i understand that this year you know obviously they're trying to coincide with something towards the halloween era and everything else but you know i i was looking probably forward to something within like you know the the man thing kind of verse and you know, werewolf by night that they had done. I would rather have taken something else like a one shot or something, other yeah. than this series. So you know, but they 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 do this with um with Marvel TV. They have a series that was like you know pretty good, and then they've got an iffy series that no one understands why they did it, and they just drop it just to drop it. This is one of those occasions. There's plenty other great characters that they have in the Marvel Universe that they could have, um, you know, look, everybody's asking for a Jessica Jones series. They could have put that back or something like that. But this is just not the character that I think deserved its own series. But we'll see. I'm going to give it a watch. Most I've watched every one of the uh, Marvel shows. I give it one, maybe sometimes two episode views. We'll see how this does. Yeah, she was great in wandavision it was a great character and it worked perfectly and there again these executives are taking away the wrong messages it's like that was a great character leave it there you don't have to do anything else with Mm -hmm. them they can just if you do another season of wanda then maybe she can come back but they oh it's a popular character we have to get get this started we better start writing scripts oh we you know and it just seems like they rush all this stuff if they have one thing that kind of pops a little bit. But all of what she is in that uh, WandaVision is going to be gone because there's no surprise anymore. You know who the character is. She's kind of a, a bad person. So is it going to be fun to watch this character gather all these witches and you know, do this thing. It's like, eh, okay. And the whole point is just going to be to get her back at the end of this series where she was at the beginning of WandaVision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know what to make of it, to be honest with you. It's just so random. It's so random of a character to have a series on. Like, it just... And I, w- I hope it's good. I hope it's good because... You know, the, the immediate thing is going to be, okay, Deadpool, Wolverine, the hype. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now you're going to watch Agatha and people, if it's not good, are going to be like, oh, back to the same old Disney shit. Mm-hmm. You know, well, so. It's like having a Pepper Potts show, right? It's like, oh, hey, let's watch her uh, figure out how to run this business. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah some, it's definitely definitely off but i think the good thing is that we do have an upcoming netflix series daredevil reborn um it sounds like vincent dion trio said that this is going to be more violent than the previous series we do have punisher back daredevil's a cool character this is a series i'm looking forward to for sure what are your thoughts on it? This could this could resurrect Marvel TV series with uh, this being back in the format. That that D twenty three trailer that they saw, and I know that they've been taking it down all over online and everything else like that. But if you had the opportunity to see it, the tones right, uh, the characters are right, and I'm glad that 
whatever happened, and this is one of the few occasions where that writer's strike helped things. Because during that writer's strike, they had the opportunity to do two things. The Kevin Fergie sat down, he watched what they were doing with uh Echo, and he was like, This is not working, we need to do some cuts to this, mm-hmm. and they just couldn't really fix that. But they were able to come back and do that with uh Daredevil and the same thing with the um Captain America Brave New World. They were able to sit there and watch it. Now I don't know why they have to sit there and watch a film. To know that it's bad because, again, this is the thing that always surprising. On the scripts, when you're reading the script, you know something works and doesn't. You don't need to spend hundreds of million dollars and then figure out it's not. But, look, this is one of the times the extra reshoots and everything paid off because the tone, you know, the instantly they said, okay, the Defenders are part of the MCU. And they brought all those Netflix characters back in. And this just tone looks fantastic. They, it looks like they pushed out a lot of things they did in She-Hulk to kind of like, you know, curb people's opinion of Daredevil. Although there is in the trailer, if you're able to see it, there is a, a mantle that has all different variants of the Daredevil costume. And that's when you're like, wow, this is they're going to take this to the next level. I love so, it. I love you it, know, man. I it's, can't it's wait fun. to see this one, man. It's one of my favorite characters, and yes. like, I, and um, I think there's so much more depth they can take this. Mm-hmm. Um, and freaking Punisher, man! Like, wow, come on, man, come on! Yeah. By the way, keep keep wa- keep watching, folks, because we're gonna get into variants again. Do we have a variant uh, Daredevil? Do we have a variant Punisher? Stay tuned, subscribe, like, but. Dr. Brantley, Chet Maddox, Punisher, Daredevil, Reborn, your thoughts. Looking good. Uh, you know, uh, Pun- uh, Daredevil was the best thing in the Echo series for that one little <laughs> fight that they had. Uh, and again, that was another character like, oh, Echo was this cool little side character in this one little thing for a couple of episodes. You don't need to make a whole show off of her. But they did, and it didn't work. But uh, this looks good. They're getting the gang back together. They even got the uh, characters that are the uh, actors that played the same characters. Uh, Because for a time, I think they were not going to do that. They were recasting. Mm -hmm. So obviously, they sat around and heard people saying like, no, 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 just pick up where that left off. Yeah, I think I think if they I think if they did it and didn't have the same actors, mm-hmm. people wouldn't be as excited. Because like John Barenthal, come on, mm-hmm. who are you gonna pick to be Punisher after He's John Barenthal did that? No, like it's nobody. And here, Dolph here's Lundgren. my take. Yeah, maybe Dolph Lundgren. I'll I'll give him that. <laughs> um, Wesley <laughs> Snipes, maybe. Uh, here's here's the thing. I always like Daredevil. Uh, Daredevil's been one of my like uh, more exciting characters to read in the Marvel universe. It holds a special place in my heart because if you think about Daredevil, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, kind of go hand in hand with you know Daredevil. Mm-hmm. That's uh, you know the Foot Clan. <laughs> like, uh, so instead of the hand, you got the Foot Clan. But uh, look. I think I think that this number one, Daredevil launched that whole thing on Netflix. It did, mm-hmm. and it didn't let anybody down. And all I remember at the time where I was working, I think it was at Apple, was like everyone was just talking about Daredevil. It was just like Daredevil this, and it, and every episode was good, mm-hmm. and and it was good all the way through. And then and then it was like. Then it was another hit, right? Then it was like pun. You had Punisher, Defenders, like Luke Cage, like, and I, I was a massive fan of Luke Cage too, because that was yeah. like a, that was a different storytelling. It was something different that we had seen. It was done right. They kept it true to the character. So, uh, look, they if they, <laughs> I mean, if they if they keep it up, I, I think that these these characters and and these franchises are going to pull marvel out of a hole that they've been sitting in for well over two years now um and uh, you know i'm i'm excited i'm excited about it like uh from an action figure standpoint 
just to tie in the plastic part real quick, uh, I, I've actually been trying to get the, um, I found it, but the, um, I think it was like the Hascon exclusive VHS pack of Daredevil and, oh, okay. and someone else I like. So I really, I really want that, but, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for all, for all, all of that. Chet, you'll be happy to hear that I did pay up to purchase the John Bernthal Punisher figure from the original Daredevil Netflix series, mm. the Marvel Legend. Paid a pretty penny, but yeah. uh, had to ha- had to have him. Had to have him, man. Uh, yeah. He he is epic. I am looking forward to that for sure. A winner. We got another one that just uh, that just was announced. D twenty three, and that is the Thunderbolts. Yeah. Um, uh, cool characters, a lot of interesting, you know, characters we've seen in other films. Uh, Bucky or Winter Soldier at the helm. You got Red Guardian. You, what are your thoughts? Could this come together and be something epic, or is this going to be another case of, you know, Winter Soldier being the only one that's kind of familiar to fans that are not super comic book heads? And will it be a failure also of like, who are these folks? Like, what are your thoughts? I mean, we've seen the team ups, the suicide squads and all that haven't been done well in the past. Well, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I, th- I think the, the, <laughs> there's two problems going into this. Um, w- one is, is that the like Marvel, the diehard Marvel fanboys are going to say shit like this isn't my Marvel. Uh, why are they focusing on things that aren't like the a the a brand? Um, and then, and then the other, the other problem is, is that if it's not good and it's not captivating, then everyone's going to be like, told you so you wasted money. However, I think that if Thunderbolts is done right, there is a massive potential um, that could happen here. So uh, I, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic for Thunderbolts. Uh, again, this kind of lands in my realm of like who asked for it, but I understand it more than like Craven. I yeah, no. I think that this is. I'll agree with you on one aspect alone. Is I think people were asking for this um, when we started seeing some of the characters. Uh, kind of like appear throughout the uh, different TV shows. Uh, the John Walker now that's U.S. agent. Uh, you know, you had the new uh, Black Widow, technically, that's, that's showing up. You know, there's a lot. Red Guardian, uh, surprisingly, he was pretty good in Black Widow, to be honest. David Walker is one of those roles he that he really did good. extremely well. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I am a massive fan of the Thunderbolts and the comic series, especially drawn by uh, Mike D. O'Donnell Jr. Did a fantastic job with it. I love the anti-team. I always thought this was a better team than the Suicide Squad. Uh, and it just seems like it's it's I think that they took the time with this because you haven't heard about massive reshoots. You haven't heard people saying like, oh, Fergie, they're worried about Thunderbolts. I think they did this one right. And this is your anti Avenger team, because at one point or another, you know, the Avengers are going to come back. But why are they introducing the Thunderbolts? Somewhere down the line, the Thunderbolts are going to have to come and do something dirty that the Avengers don't want to do. So I think it's a great setup. I think there's a lot of brilliant actors that they they have in these roles. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, hopefully it is in service of setting up bigger storylines in the future because that's what they did so well at the beginning is even though it was new, uh, you know, it was uh, Captain America, Thor, but in those movies they were setting up things that were coming into play in a movie or two down the line. Um, so yeah, hopefully this is setting them up, uh, for a bigger thing in like secret wars or something like that, you know? Yeah. Well, we did talk about fantastic four on our, uh, the last, uh, episode again, pixels, plastic and ink is live except for this episode <laughs> every Friday, 7 PM Pacific time here on the shadow Nose network. And we talked about that and also doom. If you haven't seen the Dr. Doom uh, Pixels and in Plastic Ink episode, please check it out. Plus a variety of other episodes. You can get our hot takes on a variety of different things within the industry. I think we had shared 
uh, about what we thought on Fantastic Four. We've got a Cap America that that trailer has been out for some time. So now that we have all these things up and coming, we're not going to talk about, you know, the new Avengers movies because that's later on. Let's go around. What will be the best of those movies and TV shows? The ones we just discussed will include Captain America and will include the Fantastic Four. In your opinion, what will be the top? Chat, we'll start with you. Mm. So we want to know what would be, you want to know what would be the top? Yeah, what's going to be the best of those that we just discussed, plus Fantastic Four, Captain America, what, in your opinion, will be the best of those new Marvel TV movies? It's Daredevil. Yeah, I know. I'm uh, I'm trying really I'm trying really hard to to like pin Daredevil against everything right now in my head. Uh I think I think I think Daredevil's gonna take it. Okay. I, I really go. Yeah. Mr. Storm. Yeah, I think it's it's Daredevil. I think it's the one thing that Marvel didn't conceive itself, but yet through the other regime of Marvel television over at Netflix. <laughs> Find it very funny the stuff that they're a variant that they dropped into the universe, like Deadpool Wolverine is doing better than the regular universe. But yeah, I think um, look, Charlie Cox has embodied Matt Murdock. He's done a fantastic job of it. Uh, I know. I think it was uh, season two or season three. They had one of the greatest fight sequences I have seen shot, and I heard there's another massive one take that they're doing for this season with him again. I, I think, you know, you, you got the Punisher back, you know, you've got uh, the Kingpin back, you've got all these guys. I don't see it anything else being as big of that. I think Thunderbolts has the, the honorary secondary scenario that it could be the surprise hit that people weren't expecting. So, okay. Again, right. like a big surprise like Eternals was? No, <laughs> I think it's going to be a surprise that it's going to be <laughs> Uh, one of those films. <laughs> one of those films that everybody definitely will walk away from more surprised that it was like an Avenger movie than an internal film. Okay, I yeah. agree with you. It's definitely Daredevil. All the characters are cast correctly in that, um, and maybe Fantastic Four, uh, but we just have to see how that works out. Just because it. It seems like a kind of a big swing mm. on that where uh, it's going to have this weird tone to it. And so it'll either work or not. We'll see. But uh, yeah, Thunderbolts is probably right on par with that. But uh, Daredevil is the only one that's probably surefire. I agree with you, Dr. Bradley. And a matter of fact, I'm going to take a big risk and go out on a limb and think that Fantastic Four will be the best and i have confidence in that cast and i don't think that you know i know this stuff was in production along with that I, I don't think they are going to sacrifice making this a shit bomb after deadpool and i think they've learned their lesson i think the cast is great i love who they cast as galactus um I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised. And I think obviously Daredevil is going to be great. I hope Thunderbolts is great. Uh, but a lot of stuff up and coming that's going to decide the fate of the Marvel Universe. One thing's for sure. No one's really excited about Venom Horse. Um, but we'll see what the toy looks like. We will see what the toy. And, you know, Chet does customs. We might see a Barbie horse dipped in, you know, black tar and dripping with a, you, you never know. You never know. You never know. Please subscribe, like, comment. We appreciate you all being here again with us every 7 p.m. Pacific time here on Friday, Friday nights here on Shadow Nose Network. Check out all the amazing content, including every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific time live is the Toy Box Chronicles featuring Mr. Storm, Mr. Maddox, talking about all things toys and collectibles, special guests and for those of you toy collectors, if you haven't seen the special episode where we had Ace from Ramen Toys on to talk about future projects, uh, some of the things that his, it inspires him, 
the ramen racer, the ghost rider cart man. Tune into that episode if you missed it. Let's get into now variants. There's been a ton of variants activity. Uh, you know, we saw in Deadpool some mm-hmm. variant talk with different variants. So we are the Pixels, Plastic, and Ink. Uh, we have decided to do our own spin. Uh, what would it be like if we had these variants of these top characters in the Marvel Universe? I'm super excited to get into it. So, without further ado, how should we how should we talk about it? Should we flash the first one on the screen? Yeah, we'll flash the first one on the screen. And uh, the first one on the screen, we've actually seen it on the screen before. That's right. And so the beautiful oh, part right. about it is Mr. Henry Cavill. We've already seen him, as, seen him as that. And look, if they do go through, like I, I hope Hugh Jackman is able to, because I've heard it reinvigorated him doing this film and he wants to continue to do the characters. Uh, and I hope he stays around for a long time because I think he is the living embodiment of Wolverine. But if he decides he doesn't want to do it anymore, there's a guy <laughs> like um, like Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool character said, got screwed down the street that needs a prime role. And I think the people over the MCU would really love to have Henry Cavill pop in and do that. Did they not give him the best line? They... You were just leaving. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. So the Calvarine is obviously a variant of choice and has already been featured in a Marvel movie. But what would be our variant versions? So now hmm. I do kind of I'm kind of sad they didn't have a Daniel Radcliffe version of Wolverine. <laughs> but uh hey, maybe he could be a variant. Yeah, you know, I tried to think about this, and again, they I think they just did the, the best version that I think they could do. And I, when I saw Cavill, I was like, yep, this is what, if I was going to do a variant, mm-hmm. I would do this across the line. The guy is cut, ripped. Uh, he can definitely do that role in the best of ways. So, you know. Agreed. But, you Agreed. Know, he's the best at what he does. <laughs> now, people always saying Tom Cruise for Iron Man, but he's about the right height for Wolverine. Mm, yeah, but, for the small version. Yeah. Uh, I just don't think he in any way looks like him. Even for Iron Man, I still <laughs> thought that that was, I think, like, once you saw Robert Downey Jr. and his statue and everything compared to Tom Cruise, I don't know. Because, again, we just got over just seeing the Olympics and Tom Cruise jump out of planes, jump out of buildings, go all kind of crap. I think that he would have just hijacked uh, Iron Man and it would have been something that we definitely <laughs> wouldn't want us to eat. No, no, no. You guys have to make me a real suit. And yeah. I'm going to fly it, exactly. uh, get some uh, jets. He would do that. He would do that. Let's drive a rocket ship. So uh, let's roll with the uh, next slide down. Hopefully this will work stuff out. Uh, there you go. Oh, uh, boy. Look at these, these two. picks right there. Um, I, I'll have to say that I, I can see George Clooney doing it. I don't know about now since he's made all that money from selling his uh, – the strings, I don't think we'll see George Clooney at any time get back on the screen. But if they did pop him into a variant uh, in the, one of these uh, Secret Wars or something, it'd be interesting to see. Now, Clooney was always uh, like sort of the fan casting for Reed Richards That's for true. a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which he still would have been good. He had that gray oh, yeah. going, but. Uh, yeah, he would work as Iron Man, but he is a little bit too old now. Yeah. And, well, it could be uh, a variant, an older variant Iron Man. Good. good. Aged. Old Man Iron Man. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Keanu Reeves as Ghost Rider uh, just reminds me a little too much of Constantine on a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm in it. I'm in it. <laughs> but I just, yeah. Well, I heard that was one of his um, desired characters in the future. And let's put it like this. I think if it really was, uh, you know, um, Kevin Fergie, there's no way that they wouldn't have given him this if he had sought out a true desire. So I think that was like maybe some fans wishing instead. But I've heard uh, the gentleman that plays um, Daryl Dixon, uh, Norm Raddus, has been asking for years to be that character and like i said again he can act 
Uh, I think he would be a hell of an approved than Nicolas Cage was. So, you know, I think anybody you could have gotten everything. You could get one of the zombies <laughs> from The Walking Dead. I think that would have been a better uptick. But, you know, I, I think if he's got a passion for it, I think, he, the man knows how to actually really ride bikes and everything else like that. There's a passion in there along with mm-hmm. Keanu Reeves. I think he'd be a good choice. I agree. All right. I'll go on to the next slide. Uh, we've got some other super fan casting here. Uh, we got uh, Dr. Strange as Johnny Depp. And actually, when you put the name together, Strange and Depp, it works. <laughs> I really yeah. like I really like Johnny Depp as Doctor yeah, Strange. I think he would work. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, talk about a guy who could play characters, and I feel mm-hmm. like he's got like the look, and I think he could be one of the best variants. I don't know if Disney would entertain that or not, considering mm-hmm. you know what transpired with the Pirates oh. of the Caribbean. They were the uh, studio and that then, fired him already. <laughs> <laughs> and then Br- Brad Pitt and as Thor, obviously he's a bit too old to be older Thor. I don't know if he could get as jacked as uh, Hemsworth though. I mean, but you know, maybe he's a, a, a upgrade to Odin. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Odin goes in and gets a, what's that the uh, the uh, uh, the frost sleep that he goes through, and then he comes out rejuvenated and everything. Because you know, Anthony Hopkins is getting up there now. I don't know how many too many Thor appearances he can keep making. But uh, I guess I slept in the ice and I lost my accent. (laughs) Yeah, you know, definitely. I could definitely see that. And I and I know that whenever I see uh, Cumberbatch uh, do his Doctor Strange, he does that whole like magic with his hands and everything. I can see Johnny Depp taking that to a whole different scenario. Like Jack Sparrow. He's like, yeah, (laughs) but it would work though. He would work it because Johnny, if anything, he's intense, but he knows how to get a character (laughs) across, man. He knows how to get a character across. I don't think Brad Pitt could get that buff. No. No. I mean, no. Roy's can only not take now. so far. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. now. Yeah, not now. Yeah. You know. But, but also, too, if I'm, if I'm going to put Pitt into anything else, I think um, Pitt would probably make a good uh, uh, David Banner, you know, or Bruce Banner, whichever version you want to call him. But um, I could see that working out kind of well. So, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, these were some of the. Uh, I think the Johnny Depp was the the better of the uh, variants for this one, mm-hmm. uh, for the uh, Pixel Plastic Ink uh, MCU variants. <laughs> then we'll roll down. Uh, you know, great choices. Look, they they do need to replace the King of Wakanda because I can't understand the stupidity of why you would do a film without the main character in the title. But hey, that's just me, you know. And if you're gonna do the X Men. You know, you got to pick some new actors and everything. So, there, what you there's guys your Daniel Radcliffe, Doctor Brantley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was uh, gonna go with Jason Statham. Uh, you know, as a really pissed off Professor X, uh, he would match Magneto's energy. But uh, yeah, but you would need the problem is you need a, a person that can act to be okay. An Brian team. Cranston. I'm trying to think of <laughs> so, famous bald guys. Now, <laughs> Brian Cranston actually might be pretty good, you know. Yeah, that's pretty good. Say, you know, Breaking but X. Then it's Walter White. You know? <laughs> then it's Professor White. <laughs> Breaking X. That's what Elon Musk does. <laughs> uh, uh, again, if you're going to replace the, I can't remember the actor's name right off the top of my head, uh, but uh, he's going to be in the new Alex Cross series for um, uh, for Amazon Prime, and he was formerly Hawkman in um uh black adam and i'm thinking like if, if you're gonna look the dude's buff he's got the look and everything else like that you know look no more you've got a great actor that i think you could put into that role it would make sense all, all this hodge all oh this there you go there you go yeah, yeah it, it, it just makes sense to, to replace him and you have the perfect opportunity <laughs> With the whole Secret Wars coming in and everything, characters like I, I think with Secret Wars, you're definitely going to see Captain America replaced, Iron Man replaced. Uh, I think you'll probably see. Well, you know, uh, we have a Black Widow now, but you never know how they're going to rearrange it. But mm-hmm. I do think they have the perfect opportunity to just reboot characters and start a brand new phase. So, I like to think that that's going to happen. What do you think, Chet? Uh, I don't know. I couldn't come up with any of these. I, I think 
I mean, I like who in the like uh, Days of Future Past stuff like that. The X Men. I like um, McAvoy that plays. Uh, no, yes. Yeah. Like I, I just think like he he would be an ideal mm-hmm. an ideal slot. Uh, Black Panther. I'm all about the what we have up on the screen. I think that'd be great. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I see, I because I think. I think if they're gonna re if they're gonna reboot or relaunch the X Men series, they gotta they gotta put a lot of love into it, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they got, they gotta be very specific and very like dead on if they're gonna if they're gonna make it exciting for people to want to see X Men again. Well, I also think they can't rush it either. They're gonna have to take their time and build this up because at one point or another, you know that we're gonna see uh, Avengers versus the X Men. That's the whole buildup, and it's going to, just like you built the Avengers up, you're going to have to do the same thing with the X-Men. And I want a Professor X chair that's yellow. Yes. Uh, Another guy that would be good for Black Panther, I think, is the guy that played Black Manta in Aquaman, Yaya Abdul-Mateen II. Unfortunately, Um, they, they just screwed that up with his casting as Wonder Man. Oh, he's Wonder Man. Yeah. So they made it. Okay. So so he, he he they just they screwed up. They did have a perfect casting replacement for him. They just put him in a role that technically they probably shouldn't have. <laughs> That's another stupid name. Uh, <laughs> Wonder Man does not uh, get me excited. I like. I would not want to go see a movie called. Nobody's. That. Nobody's watching fucking Wonder Man. I'm sorry. <laughs> that 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 Shadow's favorite character. Uh, he'll be watching. <laughs> he'll be in by himself with a bag of popcorn with a Wonder Man bucket. A special edition. The only one purchased is a Wonder Man bucket. <laughs> well, no, I think the the Wonder Man's going to be a Disney Plus show, so it's not for the screen. So then he'll so then he'll be at home with a Wonder Man yeah, bucket, a bucket. <laughs> yeah. nice. which is just a clear bowl. Yeah. <laughs> I, and 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 I wonder why you're watching it by yourself. There you go. Uh, all right, we got the next slide to roll in. Uh, this is interesting here. Uh, I you know uh, Matt Damon. It, this you know as Magneto. That's a a little bit different. I don't know if Matt Damon could pull this one off, uh, especially after you saw Michael Fassbender do it. It's, you know, they're, they're two different versions of actors intensity wise. I think Damon always ends up playing a better hero than like, you know, some villainous kind of thing. And I I don't know if he could pull that one off and everything. I think Liam Neeson could be Magneto. That, that will work, actually. That will work. We've never um, really seen Liam Neeson as a bad guy, have mm-hmm. we? Mm, yeah, so. but we've seen him with a lot of special skills. <laughs> and there you go. Put the helmet on him. And that's the ultimate special skills. I think this one, Ben Stiller, is he could easily be Ant Man to me. Like I, I, Paul Rudd, Ben Stiller, very similar. I think that, yeah, I think they're cut from the, you know, just. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think they're pretty much damn near even the same age almost. Uh, yeah, I, I think that. Well, I think even um, unfortunately for Paul Rudd, um, that's probably one of the most replaceable roles in the Marvel universe. If you got an actor <laughs> that can that's a comedian that can just pull off, because I didn't think other than when I saw him in, um, I think Endgame was the first time I thought that wow, this performance really because most of the movies are kind of whimsical. You have a good mm-hmm. time with it, but you're like, you know, it's like the Jim Carrey and the mask kind of thing. You could just get a, a new age uh, comedian to come in and do that role and you you're probably not gonna lose anything but uh his his role in the uh, end game and infinity um it it kind of elevated that a little bit more but i do think ant-man's the most replaceable mcu role if they had to as long as you got a good comedian that's hot i think he could do that role okay yeah. matt damon as magneto and ben affleck as professor x Oh my god! We well, why wouldn't it know? be uh like uh, Ben Affleck as Magneto and then uh, Matt Damon as I think because Ben Affleck I think could pull a villain off a little bit more. I've seen Matt Damon do you know like uh, talented Mr. Ripley stuff like that. I mean, well, that's like damn near almost forty years ago. <laughs> you know, but 
Interstellar, just, he was a good bad guy. Uh, he got killed and swept by a wave. I hate to ruin the film for you guys. Uh, you know, why is it? it? It's one of those aspects where I just think that sometimes he just seems like he's like he always plays like the really, really super good guy, and it's just hard to see him flip around and turn it. But Ben Affleck, I could see Ben Affleck having an extra interior. I think Affleck's even a little bit well now it took a lot of years but i think that affleck is a better actor than matt damon is mm. so you know but it'd be an interesting yin -yang, i don't know about you know? that <laughs> uh, uh 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 argo uh some of his other performances and everything else like that matt as damon an actor has... no he's yeah. a great director I think uh, I think he I think he's played off the role. He did the uh, the Superman role where he played George Reeves. Like the man has like you know the town and everything. When you think of iconic, uh, but that was <laughs> look. There are so many roles that I think that they did early on in the early days when they were just trying to do cash grabs and get roles that they really just did not help themselves. He'll never, be forgotten. Uh, yeah, never no. be forgotten. Yeah, no, forgiven, forgotten, oh, but, or forgiven for yeah. that role. And that bullseye was terrible as well. Yeah, yeah. true. Mm -hmm. um, also, right, that well, uh, yeah. that kingpin was pretty terrible too. And if, I love uh, Michael Clunk Darkin, but he screwed the hell out of that role. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just overall bad. Just bad, bad, bad. Uh, we'll roll the next one. Let's see. I think this is the last one right here. And uh, no, our that's version of supposed to be Sandra Bullock. Yeah, well, just, just Sandra like a very Bullock. young Sandra Bullock. <laughs> if you had a DeLorean, if you had a DeLorean and was able to go 88 miles and go back in time, you know, to like the early 90s when she was in speed, yes, you could do this. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a massive Sandra Bullock fan, so I'm I'm on board. Yeah, I think it's age appropriate for like a Hugh Jackman Wolverine, <clears throat> kind of a, you know, love triangle kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's uh interesting but uh yeah you know look this again you know all she's only into like when you have a gene gray she's there for one film and everything's great and the next thing you know she goes dark phoenix and then she's gone <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> it, it has a it has like one of those uh you know um stop rewind to repeat kind of things to it you know mm -hmm. as a character so but I do think it's a very important uh, role that they're going to have to cast for that next X Men movie. Look, uh, like like uh, uh, Jet was saying, like every role that they do for X Men, it's going to be critical. You've really got to get this right. You can't screw this up. You've already had like you know so so movies uh, from the uh, 20th Century Fox days where it was a roller coaster and stuff. I think you really got to up your game for the X Men if you see them again for the next time. And you're going to need to cast people that can do this for 10, 15, 20 years mm -hmm. in the future if they need. Like a Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yeah. Now, I had a couple of extra ones that we didn't uh, put up. I thought uh, there were I thought there were more. There's not any more. Uh, no, that was it. No, no, sir. I, 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 sent, I sent a few more, but oh, okay, let's, let's get into it, Dr. Brantley. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, wait a minute. You know what? There was. Uh, wait a minute. We might have skipped over. Wait a minute. I think. Hold on. Let me see because I know the same. Okay. There you go. There you go. Uh, These are the two last two. Last two actually. We're rushing the end to the point and everything. Well, this Tom was Dr. Hanks Brantley's Brantley's cool. suggestion. This yeah. was a good one. Yeah. He's Tom dazed. Hanks as Mephisto. Well, if you're gonna sell your soul, uh, <laughs> you know, it's probably gonna be a nice guy that's gonna. Hey, how's it going? That slick back curly hair. <laughs> I like John Ham as Punisher. I yeah, think that like, could actually like, work. Yeah, he's like, uh, you know what this Punisher fits in? This Punisher looks like he fits into where what they're talking about, the Fantastic Four world that's coming out. I was thinking more like if you hadn't had Thomas Jane selected and you picked the right choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. would have been and John also Hamm. chose someone else for John Travolta's role. <laughs> yeah, that's that was even that's worse. true too. That's true too. <laughs> but uh, and while, like I said again, you know, look, I think uh, 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 Thomas Jane has done some great roles. I don't think that that Punisher was just it was not up to snuff on that. I think John Hamm would have made a more violent Punisher 
Um, and, you know, we probably wouldn't be thinking about replacing him, actually, uh, with anyone at the moment if he would have had that role. So, And you could have had yeah. some sequels. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know, um, like, could John Hamm pull this off? There's hints of it when he was in Baby Driver, if you remember. He yeah. Mm -hmm. He played a bad guy, and he could. I could definitely think he could pull it off a darker version. Mm-hmm. And and also that's a look up until uh, John's taking the role for the Punisher, right? Then they have probably never really casted that role correctly, because you know God rest his soul, Ray Stevenson that passed away. Look, that's that's on par with something that Roger Corman would have made that uh, Punisher War Zone. That was that was a mm -hmm. a terrible movie, and it had probably one of the most the worst MCU villains. Like that literally looked like Sony made that. <laughs> mm hmm. Dr. Bradley, what were your variants that we didn't uh, feature? So, uh, I was thinking of the Fantastic Four, if you're going to redo it a little bit. Uh, and the first one I thought of was as the voice for the thing, Kevin Grievous. And, you know, uh, sort of, he could be that big, hulking, uh, scary guy. Johnny Storm, Dylan O'Brien from uh, Maze Runner and Teen Wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, Sydney Sweeney as Invisible Woman. I think everyone would want to see that at this point. You'd probably make a billion dollars. Just to that. see her in a skin tight yeah. blue outfit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I thought of an interesting one for Mr. Fantastic, a little bit different. Rob Lowe. And mm. just you know a little bit more in his head uh scholarly but uh yeah you uh you're really trying to get some of these actors work kevin grievous and uh, <laughs> rob Lowe. you're out you're out there trying to feed some folks so i appreciate those recommendations <laughs> <laughs> any other uh variant recommendations no no but i've already hit my choice on it man to be quite honest with you it is always a fun exercise to have some uh, some fan casting out there. But, you know, like I said, the best thing is that not our opinions. It's what the uh, people think out there. So if we uh, hit some of these right or wrong and everything, let us know in the comments because we know you're going to let us know in the comments. <laughs> 100%. Emma Watson, Scarlet Witch. Oh, that's a good one. I can see that. I can see that for sure. This is fun. I like talking yeah. Marvel. Again, at the end of the day, we think Fantastic Four, Thunderbolts, Punisher has some hope. And uh, what we don't uh, have confidence in is Craven, maybe Agatha, yep. definitely not Venom and Venom, of course. We appreciate you all tuning in again uh, on this 7 p.m. Friday nights, Pixels Plastic, Shadow Nose Network. And is, of course, as always, yep. we got to say some love. To our affiliates, first off, Entertainment Earth. Why not? If you're going to order some in-stock yep. items, lots of cool shit hitting the shelves. Toy Box Chronicles every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific time. We talk. They talk about the. They talk about the best toys in 2024 thus far. You could get them now. Well, some of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them are are grails, sure. but you can go on Entertainment <laughs> Earth. And as yep. always, if you're looking for more of the rare, more of the vintage, uh, well, we got to support the mom and pops and the local shops. And absolutely we'll that than the ones that have been sponsoring us from day one. Toys versus Gamers. I'm here with the man, the owner. Tony at Toys vs. Games.
versus James. Oh. I'm be honest. I want that Technodrome. <laughs> Same. 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 Well, Tony's got it. Tony's got it. Lots of fun stuff headed uh, on the channel. Uh, lots of great content. Again, a lot of unboxing videos with Chet Maddox himself. Cool shorts. We got wrestling uh, videos. A lot of things happening in the wrestling world. Roman Reigns is back for you wrestling fans. Uh, but also a lot of other stuff. Uh, brothers and sisters podcasts. And uh, should we give you the rundown of what's happening on uh, in the Shadow Nose Network in our brothers podcasts absolutely all you star wars fans and junkies get your fix at sarlacc digest channel and for all you toys and Marvel and comic heads, well, you're you found the right place. You're with us this evening, <laughs> gentlemen. Final thoughts on tonight's episode. I think y'all did really good. <laughs> uh, hey. hey, hey, thanks for the the re re positive reinforcement, Chad. Yeah, because if we don't give it, no one will. And here's <laughs> the deal. Okay, uh, look. There better be more good than bad in this barrage of Marvel stuff being released. Because, simply because, Marvel can't do animation and DC can. But DC can't do live action and Marvel can. And uh, you, don't, uh, you don't really have a lot of like animated stuff that's coming out that's fun to watch. Um, and I'm just hoping that a majority of what's coming out is better or surprisingly better um, than what we expect. However, that being said, um, track records there, you know? They have well. so many characters that they should be able to come up with interesting stories for years to come and at times it seems like they're scraping the bottom of the barrel and i don't quite get why they're doing that um so hopefully it's all just uphill from here well i'm, I'm incredibly optimistic i think them pulling off the deadpool wolverine was like something out of left field that they would have never done if their backs wasn't up against the wall and i really do think that l let's be quite honest with you if kevin fergie went down this route there was going to be something that was going to happen. Somebody was going to get replaced because you can't go from back to back to back to back billion dollar movies. And then you hit like you can't get television right. You can't get, you know, the films right. So I really do think the saving grace was Deadpool Wolverine. I think they're able to take a little bit more risks now and start bringing in certain things. Look, we all want to see uh, Wesley Snipes back as Blade. You know, Michelle Ali, I think he's a great guy. But why don't, why don't we give Wesley Snipes his ride off into the sunset with Blade? I think it's about time. Agreed. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. And uh, we'll catch you at another time on the same channel. Have a good day.